So what's interesting is um, the, the history of pi actually parallels the history of geometry because in, in the early stages of geometry when everything was done by construction with, with compass and straight edge, okay, all the, all the ancient cultures were using these tools to try to figure the closest approximation to pi that they could. And it's interesting because um, they could they could realize even then that was a, it was a really elusive number that there was something special about it just like with the golden ratio, and when they tried to construct it they just they couldn't quite get an exact ratio that would that would match it it was close but not quite right so in in ancient Babylonia they used the ratio twenty five to eight. Okay, which again is approximate because it's 3.125, right? Again, if you're constructing something round with that ratio, you're going to get something that's fairly round and fairly accurate, right? No, exactly. In Egypt, they used 256 to 81, okay? Imagine the kind of calculation that you'd be doing to get that ratio, but once they got it, 3.16, again, they could construct things that were very accurate based on that, right? but not exact. So in China, the ratio they worked with, 355 to 113, is 3.14159, okay? All those digits right there are exactly accurate to buy. This, this decimal approximation, this ratio, is the closest that any culture came to what pi exactly was because, and, and this is an interesting question, if, if you were using compass and straight edge, how could you possibly figure out what that ratio was if you didn't know what it was, right? The way they did it is they constructed things with straight lines because they could do geometry with things with straight lines rectangles, squares, triangles. They understood all that geometry. It was the curve, it was the circle that was so elusive, right? So a Chinese mathematician actually created a hundred-sided figure by hand, okay? Imagine constructing that accurately. And then went through and did the math on what the area of each one of those slivers was, and added them together, figured out that what that was, and then translated that to this this map. I mean, this was an intense study. And again, it, it raises the question, why would somebody even want to do that? Okay, I mean, that's like, that's a lot of work to get to that point. Well, the, and we're going to look at this later in the day, there's an ancient problem, and it's one of the oldest in mathematics. How do you create a circle with the exact same area as a given square? Or how do you...